What's up guys, this is Heiss. Today we're coming at you from the Colorado Railroad Museum in the Roundhouse this time. And we are in between stalls one and two. And stall one, 491 is sitting percolating away, awaiting her hostler. But in stall two is Rio Grande Southern number 20. And she's almost ready to get back in service. But someone asked a pretty good question on the channel, talking about throttle valves, asking what they look like and how they work. And this is probably gonna be my last chance for a little minute to actually film one. So I figured I'd climb on top and show you what a steam dome throttle looks like. So let's actually take a look at that. Let me uh, safely climb up top and then I'll meet you up there. All right, I'm now sitting on the steam dome of the Rear Grand Southern number 20 here in stall two. And we got a nice view from up here. Anyway, so one of the neat things that you don't tend to get to see is the top of the steam dome. The top of the dome, at least on 20, looks like this. And 20's got a really neat cap with that big fillet radius going up there. And it's, uh, it's got a pocket on the inside so the inside of the cap is not flat. 491 has a totally flat cap, and 346, as you can see, has a, a kind of stepped cap, but this one's got a big, neat radius, and just depends on the type of throttle, the clearance between the throttle and the cap, and then the pressure that the boiler works at, depending on what design they actually end up using. But here's 20s, and you can also see this is where our safety valves are mounted. The monkey tail, which is used to vent steam or and also operate any steam powered appliances, such as like a wrecker or a, a pile driver or something. You can put a hose on that and that's where it gets its steam. Here's the shutoff valve for where the whistle will mount. And then this is just our lifting eye that threads into the hole in the center so that we can lift the dome cap with a crane or a chain fall or something to actually get it in place because uh, something that thick, uh, extremely heavy. But we want to know what a throttle valve looks like. So I got to turn around and show you the dome. So here it is. This is the throttle valve itself and then the opening for the dome. 20s is a pretty sizable opening for the size of locomotive it is. 491s is a similar size. 346s is much smaller. I can't fit in 346s boiler, but I can in 491 and 20. And if you look down in, down into the darkness, I'll see if I can increase this in post, you can see the tubes down there. And you can also see how the dome was actually formed with all of the different little drilled holes that were knocked out after they rolled the sheet. Some pretty neat engineering. This is how the turret works. This pipe right here, it literally just runs from there into the cab, in, through the boiler, into where the turret is. So it gets the cleanest steam almost at the top of the dome. That way you don't end up running water through your appliances, you just get steam. But here is the throttle valve itself. Most throttle valves end up looking something like this if they're a steam dome throttle with the elbow here and then the standpipe. And down below the standpipe, is a donut, which is the joint between the standpipe and the dry pipe. The dry pipe is called the dry pipe because you hope it stays dry. <laughs> if you run water through it, you're going to be having some problems with your engine shortly, whether it's a Blue Peter incident or uh, blowing the heads off. So don't do that. But that's why the throttle valve is mounted so high up in the actual dome itself. So this is the valve here. When you pull the throttle handle in the cab, there's a crank that is, sits below this and actually runs a stud that sticks up through here. So this pipe right here that runs between the dome and the cab is actually the pipe that the throttle rod runs in all the way to where the throttle comes out in the packing gland in the cab. And so that clevis there with the T, that's actually the throttle rod. <laughs> I'm used to looking at 491. I'm used to looking at 491s where the throttle rod comes in through the boiler and there's packing in the back head instead. But 491's a much bigger locomotive and it's a different design style. So uh, that's actually the throttle rod and then the crank connects to that and probably pivots off some part of the standpipe. When you pull on the throttle bar, that bar goes that way and then that pushes on a crank 
or pulls on a crank that translates that into a vertical lifting force. And it picks up the plug here. This is the actual valve itself. And as you open the throttle valve, you lift this guy up. You can see that it's got two seats. And then the steam flows down inside. So you have a lower seat and an upper seat. And it's critical that they're machined concentrically and that they're lapped concentrically and lapped in the right order to make sure that you don't have any leaks. Because a throttle that leaks is an engine that runs away. It stares at 491. Here's the plug itself and the way it looks. And you can see that the lower seat is smaller than the upper seat. And that's so that in the event of any issues, the steam will try and close the throttle rather than open it. So you've always got a little bit of help on that end. So that's what a throttle looks like and what the steam dome looks like. And we put a whole big cosmetic cover on it. Like you can see 491s with the handles and it's a, that's a way that you can make the locomotive look pretty and not have to worry about it. But I'm going to gently put the, the plug back in here as you don't want to damage the seats. There it sits. Those seats are incredibly important on the throttle. If, if you have any defect or anything blocking them, you can have a runaway locomotive, even if it's just that much. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you liked this look at what a throttle valve looks like. 346s almost looks exactly the same. 491s is giant. The plug is 10 inches in diameter and it almost fills this whole space. When I work on 491, I can only get one arm in about this far on one side. And I'm not the biggest buffest dude out there. You have to be pretty skinny and have long arms to get underneath and actually take the bell crank apart. It's quite the pain. And it's not that bad on the other K37s either. I've taken 493's throttle out and it was way easier than 491's. So I don't know why she's special, but she's ours. So anyway, I hope you guys liked this look at what the throttle and the steam dome looks like and hopefully learned something new. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.